right home before I left, and they just passed the bill in the House of Representatives, the uh, rescue bill, and I'm so happy they did, mm -hmm. and everything. What a time to be alive. So much going on. So good to see you, and welcome. Welcome to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome to the program a dear friend, Dr. Larry Gell. He's the Director General of the um, uh, International Agency for Economic Development. He'll be known to many in the audience who uh, has the program inside the United Nation, um, inside the United Nations, the global issues, issues, issues. A uh, really important thing. Uh, we're dear friends from way back, and we're going to be talking about the economic situation. Larry, welcome so much to the set. Glad you could get here. Okay. Well, first of all. Mm -hmm. Uh, the United Nations and all the ambassadors would have to thank you because you're the one that got me on the television show <laughs> and started the show and you've been 13 talking years to ago. Them all and you've gotten a great uh, yeah. feel for the international community by that, haven't you? Yeah. You know, after I, having and just go over you could a little bit the fact that you were an, a consultant at the highest levels of the world economic order for a long time before being at the UN. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I, I spent about 50 years consulting to chief executive officers, vice presidents of marketing, sales. All around the globe. Yeah, I know. And then uh, 1990. Before everybody in the world was calling themselves a consultant. Oh, yeah. that's a, You were that's there the before job. there was nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> well, we knew there was only, there was less than a dozen professors, universities professors, mm -hmm. that were called consultants. Consultants, <laughs> yeah. Now everybody <laughs> in, in the, the world's got consultant there. Yeah. 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 Well, when they fire everybody, that's immediately what everybody does. They yeah. automatically become a consultant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, your program's great. You talk to the ambassadors, yeah. and then you get a political sense of the world having been in the business world and you're a consultant always ex you you were always a external mm. i think or independent consultant right. which gives you a kind of overview of things that sometimes people within that fishbowl don't see things so clearly yeah definitely yeah so it might apply now it might. because we're right here let's mark this date okay this okay. is october 3 of the uh, year in the christian era 2008 and this House of Representatives, having rejected the rescue bill for the for the American economy uh, last week, did pass it today. Okay. After the Senate had passed it a couple of days ago, so it looks like that rescue bill is going to come into effect, and that's something that's going to be informing everything because a lot of changes going on. You're familiar with a lot of those companies, AIG, that yeah. sort of thing, Friday May, and, oh, yeah. and all that. And uh, it's, it's had major changes. The whole system is being roiled and disrupted, and it's a time of qualitative uh, challenge to the system under which the planet's been operating. It yeah. could be seen, it seems to me. Yeah, change mm -hmm. time, time of change. Time to change. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm sitting here smiling and thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, th I'm thinking what, what, one of the gentlemen here that's... Uh, actually helping in the back of yeah. producing this show. Hmm. He said, um, uh, what should we talk about? And I said, w what would you like to talk about? He said, I don't know. Give me a couple topics. And I said, how about uh, why I don't vote and why this economic bailout won't work? He well, said, that would be great. Well, that'd be good. That'd be very timely. Cause it, <laughs> but I don't know if that's right. Well, I, I don't think it is. I'm very happy it did. But for reasons we can get into, I want to get into with you and everything. But I saw some of the people on it, because I've been following it very carefully. And I've seen a lot of the people where it's up to 50 to 1 against it because there's a perception that all that money for the people who robbed us blind and the, the, <laughs> the, the upset is really, really palpable in the society, but they managed to pass it. But yeah. the people are really against it, and a lot of, and it's really shaking. Are you up. happy with it? Oh, very. Yeah, Why? I'm very happy for my own reasons. I don't okay. necessarily have to go into, but I would think that there's a lot of people who, let's say people who are people at MNN or people who are thinking about the injustices that exist within the world. Mm -hmm. We've been able to observe increasing injustice. I think it's 400 times now the pay of the CEOs as opposed to yeah, 20 or something absolutely. like in Europe. That kind of stuff. And the injustices of the time in which we find ourselves, which goes back over a longer critique of uh, back to the anarchists, God bless them, and all the people who are holding on for the fact that the capitalist system that's in place and running the world and everything is hopelessly flawed. And if only the day comes when that is going to be fundamentally challenged to be the time for the new liberating order that is called for, if the civilization and the world is going to survive, maybe it would be some of the prescriptions of Karl Marx, or there's Maoists in Tibet now and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. 
And uh, so there's a lot of thinking of people who've been thinking about it. Changes needed in order to bring justice who would be thinking, um, Naomi Klein writes mm. very well on economics yeah. and that sort of thing, Amy Goodman and the yeah. people that are doing that, they would be thinking this might be the time for that change that everybody's been just yearning for because the system has been fundamentally challenged and so this is the time for understanding what uh, the change might be, if you understand okay. what I'm saying. Yeah, I think so. Mm. I think, correct me if you're wrong, I think what you're saying is you're saying is the system is so screwed up and capitalism really doesn't work and it's quite obvious now, mm -hmm. not only to us right now, mm -hmm. but it's been obvious to a lot of uh, uh, ambassadors and leaders of other countries. Structural adjustment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, not only that. Yeah. But, but look at Brazil. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, which is, seems to be doing okay, looks great yeah, on the surface. Right here, yeah. But then you look at its neighbor next door to them and you see Bolivia. Mm -hmm. which just went under Bush's democracy yeah. and threw us out, basically. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of problems there. Evil Morales is there now, yeah. <laughs> right. They're having trouble there, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I interviewed the ambassador on my show, and I said, what's your number one biggest problem in your in country? Bolivia? Yeah. I lived a year and a half in Bolivia. I know. Yeah, I was yeah. We were yeah. talking. You'll see the mm. show. We were talking about you on the show. Oh, really? Okay, yes. yeah. So I asked him, what's his number one biggest problem? Now, n normally in 13 years of uh, 52 weeks a year for 13 years, asking ambassadors, leaders of countries, what's your number one problem? They, they get into the economics. Yes. They say, you know, it's uh, we can't feed our people or uh, we're trying to sell our agriculture in the markets around the world and we're being blocked. Um, or there's sanctions put on us by the U.S. government and we can't move because it's like killing your credit line, so on mm -hmm. and so similar to what's happening. And, and here's the ambassador of Bolivia, and I ask him, he's the first one ever did it, and he looks at me and he says, our biggest problem is the rich. He says that there's a little teeny 1% of the rich in this country mm. uh, who we overthrew mm -hmm. in this election because mm -hmm. they held a democracy, mm -hmm. which is what Bush wanted, like, like he wanted in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And like Venezuela, both mm -hmm. countries, the people all voted, and they voted us out. Yeah, right. They said the capitalist Same system doesn't work. Same thing happened in, uh, in, in, uh, you know, with Hamas yeah. in uh, Gaza. Yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. You know, democracy Absolutely. is great as long as they vote in our guys. Exactly. Otherwise, then there's a problem. Yeah, right. People that are against the status quo in a major right. way. And so that's that, exactly what mm -hmm. our policy is against uh, uh, Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. So we don't like, uh, the, I mean, everybody loved uh, Mugabe up until 2000. He was a hero. He was a real hero along with, uh, who's the fellow in Gam in, Zam in northern Rhodesia? It was uh, Kenneth Kaunda. Kaunda, Remember your we friend. did a program yes, in Libya. <laughs> and <laughs> Libya is a major force down there in the European, in the, uh, you know, in the African Union now. Yeah. Our friend Ali Trachey and Muammar Gaddafi. I still yeah. think there's a great deal good to be said for Muammar Gaddafi and maybe by extension, the Islamic world might have things that are going to be relevant to the reformation of the world order that's going to be in the offing in the time ahead. I believe yeah. they may have something to do, particularly around the issue of usury, yeah. that there are some people, scholars, who are trying to hold on to yeah. getting, not getting around that issue, which informs our whole economic system, unfortunately, yeah. now. Yeah, and that swings it around in the circle back to uh, what you're saying, basically. I think. You're saying the system doesn't work, and thank God it's finally uh, in a big problem. And thank God that the government is now stepping in to bail that out. That bailout will not work, by the mm -hmm. way. Okay, you think the bailout will not work. Okay, P spell positively. it out what you think, yeah. Positively will not work. Mm -hmm. we're, in, we're in very deep now, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. deeper than anybody really wants to talk about, but they are hinting around the edges mm -hmm. of it and so forth. Yeah. And all that will do is go in there and pay, uh, the, you know, s stabilize the banks. Yeah. Which are the people that caused all the problem in the first place. Right, right. And it's interesting how the links are. If you if you can link things, it's very fascinating. Like you take the debate last night. Yeah, you with Miss Palin and uh, Biden. Yeah. yeah, and you would think there's no link between them and and this bailout. Oh, yeah, there will be. This will be a big issue. But go ahead, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's fascinating because uh, if you look at um, uh, Biden, and mm. they, they ask Biden, I have it on one of my websites, I put up on one of my websites, um, because that's what this election is supposedly about. It's supposed to be about change, changing Washington. Yes, Obama, Obama says yeah. Obama says Washington is broke. This, that was his quote. Mm -hmm. I, I took that off of one of his quotes, put it on one of my websites. Yeah. Um, so what's, what's broke in Washington? Well, here we have a, a vice president running with Obama to supposedly mm -hmm. change America, mm -hmm. and the system, and he is from Delaware. Now, Delaware is That's a banking. All the corporations are That's a banking state, yeah. right? Yeah. So they said last night. Not because, only banking, corporations. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, but but especially the the banking, and I'll tell you why. Okay. 
uh, and they said last night on the show, but nobody picked that up or mm -hmm. they don't want to talk about that. They said that Mr. Biden was one of the people who voted for the bankruptcy law changes uh -huh. in America. Okay. Yeah. So all, and this leads back to this big crisis we're in because uh, it, you can just follow it right back through the, you know, the, the trail. Mm. Uh, first of all, what they did is they they got the bank, the banks lobbied the government, and they got the changes that they wanted down in Washington. And what they did was first they changed the uh, usury, the laws, so we have usury, usury rates, which used to be criminal, mm -hmm. for for uh, your credit cards. I think we got around that quite a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's yeah. Uh, in, other, in other words, all behavior is cause. It takes yeah. somebody's causing things to happen. Yeah. Right. It, we're yeah. not just in a crisis because it just happened. Well, all okay, be yeah. somebody caused it to yeah. happen, uh -huh. and it's been a series of things that's caused this thing to happen. Uh -huh. And basically, what has been is started back with Gingrich. Nobody wants to admit it, in my opinion. It started well, with Gingrich. I, started with, with Reagan. With all due respect, I don't. Uh, you're going to have to go back more than that. I think <laughs> okay, you're going to have to ahead. go back to political theory and and economic theory and back through history in order to pick up the trends of where it all started. I would submit that, but that's okay. You can't <laughs> yeah. begin with Gingrich. I don't think you know. I think it goes back. It's yeah. it's a problem at the level. The the problem if you if you look at the way the world is organized and the systems and institutions in place, um, it 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 will all come back to a certain sense. And this is what's interesting. It's all going to come back to at a certain level economic theory, which is arcane. But yeah. it's going to come back. But, to certain but the theory doesn't work. Well, yeah, but we come back to what it is about the theoretical, economic theoretical understanding of an economy and a society, which then informs the political process and the sociological process, and it's at that level where they've been off base. I think some of the Marxists would argue that way. Mm. They would say that they just didn't understand how, you know, the, the Marxian view or yeah. the socialist view. So they'll have that. But it would be also, we haven't had a model, a capitalist model, Right from the beginning, that was able to handle what the future, the present, and the future requires in terms of an altered system because yeah. of changes that have happened. Yeah. Okay. So the question becomes: Is does capitalism work, or does it not work? Well, if capitalism works as it is, or is there something that can be reformed, or how do you deal at it at a theoretical level? That's yeah. what you know. I'm yeah. thinking, but I don't. Th but I the think question it's is: Does it work? Gingrich does it work? Oh, it's definitely started very strongly with Gingrich and Reagan because what they did was Gingrich said he had a contract with America. Mm -hmm. I used to run seminars for executives. I say, anybody hear about Gingrich? Everybody say, yes. I say, okay. And these are executives, smart people in business. I say, mm -hmm. okay. Does anybody know about his ca contract with America? And they would say, well, we've heard about it. I said, has anybody read it? No. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know what's in it? No. Mm -hmm. and, and it was part of the Reagan, and it, by the way, it had nothing Reagan. to do with the Republicans because uh, uh, Billy Clinton the president mm -hmm. also said uh, when he started his administration for eight years on the Democrat side, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to get big government off your back. Yeah. And, Reagan, mm -hmm. and that contract with America Welfare was to yeah. downsize the federal government. Yeah, right, right. And okay. when, when you downsize, I was just asked this by the Bureau of FBI. As a matter of fact, they asked me about this a few, maybe a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. They said, what's going on in this economy? What's going on? I said, very simple. When you downsize the federal government, get the government off the back. You don't get the government off my back. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was on my back in the first place, mm -hmm. and I don't know when it's off my back. Mm -hmm. You don't know, and no one else knows either, yeah, yeah. except when you downsize the federal government, you downsize the regulators, yeah. which are keeping an eye on the businesses. Right. So right. then the businesses start to wheel and deal. Yeah. 50 years of consulting, I only learned there's only two kinds of executives that run businesses. I've what never kind? found a third. Mm -hmm. If you or any of your audience knows of a third, send me an email. I'll go back to college and teach the kids. Mm -hmm. But after 50 years of consulting, mm -hmm. I only found two executives that are on a continuum. Mm -hmm. One out at this end is building building the business for the future. Mm -hmm. They intend to build the business, you know, it's like the GEs and the IBMs and so forth. They used mm -hmm. to be the AIGs too, mm -hmm. but something happened Mr. in there. Mr. Greenberg. Yeah, yeah, and I know him very well. Mm -hmm. so, so something happened over there. Uh, so, but anyways, these are the guy, men that build these corporations and they tend to build them. The other end, there are men that just rip it off. Mm -hmm. And this is legal out here. And mm -hmm. this is legal out here because it falls within the, the legal uh, uh, structure and laws of corporate business. You can build a business to rip it off, and you can also build a business to grow it. What happens is the continuum slides down in this direction, and someplace in here there's an illegal area, mm -hmm. which they tend to get into. Mm -hmm. And when you get the regulators off the back of the banks and, and the financial people, including Greenberg and the Whee! other people, <laughs> right, right, then they start to slip over in there. I know mm -hmm. Ma Hank Greenberg, he never in a million years, a billion years, he'd never, never, never do what he did in the past. Mm -hmm. 
But, and he even admitted it on a Charlie Rose show. I love it, the clip. He said, mm -hmm. well, uh, what I did was uh, they, they changed the rules on me, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so, in other words, they stopped the, uh, the, the they, they stopped loosening the rules, mm -hmm. began to tighten it down on him, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that's Just when now got, in the media. That's when he got trapped because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was doing something illegal and they went after him about it because they had his son in one business and they were, you know, double dipping and playing yeah. games and so yeah. forth. And they a went after a massive insurance uh, agency. Yeah, and the richest, really, the richest mm -hmm. man in the world. You know, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Really, I mean, they, they don't list him in Forbes anymore. But I happen to know he's got businesses all over the globe and all kinds of wealth and mm -hmm. you know, so on and so forth. Yeah, and he got voted no, out. No, the capitalist system. Mm -hmm. I lived in it for fifty years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was in their jets and their planes and their businesses, and I made hundreds of billions of dollars for American corporations, which I can prove. Mm -hmm. I have the evidence and the proof. Right. Uh, the point is, it works magnificently. My absolutely magnificently for, for people at the top because yeah. it compounds yeah. money compounds for right. them. Right. So when when Bush comes in and he says if you if you elect me president I'm gonna I'm gonna give tax breaks you know while he's down well he continued this whole process so did Clinton it was a, it was a yeah, tax well, breaks to the rich well he give did four that years. was a singular thing it was almost a two trillion dollar tax cut overwhelmingly went to the rich the upper one percent. And on top I mean, of that, and, and, and it got passed. Yeah. Then he then they said, well, don't worry about it because it's going to trickle down to the rest of society. Yeah, and it'll create create growth, and so yeah, right. Yeah, but I'm over at the United Nations. There's these little old ladies at the United Nations, which I learned more from than I learned from business people. I mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. uh, they're all super wealthy uh, women who uh, have nothing to do, so they join these uh, uh, non-governmental organizations, yeah. and they have nothing to do. They go over to the UN, they sit at the UN, but they're smart. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there, and, the, and Bush has given this uh, speech about, well, don't worry, if I give it to the rich, they, they develop the economy, and it trickles down, like yeah. Palin was saying mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. It trickles. And the little old ladies are sitting there at the UN, and they're saying, does anybody see the word trick and trickle down? Uh -huh. It's uh -huh. not going to trickle down. Uh -huh. It's going to gush up because uh -huh. it's a multiplying factor. Mm -hmm. We don't understand economics, and, and you know, we haven't got the slightest idea because we plus and minus our check accounts. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. no such thing as a plus and minus what it has to do with money. Ask any banker. They'll tell mm -hmm. you money is a multiplier. Mm -hmm. It's either compounding for you or compounding against you. Where did you get plus and minus? Mm -hmm. So, well, I've been doing it all my life. Well, that's your problem. That's why you're in the condition you're in. Well, it's been compounding very uh, handily for the super wealthy. Yeah, so now why should you bail them out? Uh -huh. Why should you go back and bail out well, these people the who ripped you Well, that's the overall sentiment off? of the country. Fifty percent of the, uh, fifty to one are the people who are against it, uh, or Thank against the people because they say, why the hell should we bail out those guys so they can buy another yacht. Thank God the people are getting smarter. The well, system doesn't work for, for, the system doesn't work for the middle class and the lower class. But that, that's an issue that was being polled and so forth vis-a-vis -vis this bill that has apparently passed, both Senate and House. George Bush is ready to sign it, so it's going to go into effect. And it's oh, they're going to do it. It's going to, it's going to have $700 billion that's going to be made available and that kind of thing. It's a lot so, of for, for you? No, no, for no. For middle class? No, no. For the poor? Well, that's a, that's a thing that you're talking about. And I saw Warren Buffett uh, on your suggestion. I'm glad you told me that. And he said it's a he, great was, show. he was just hoping that that is enough. Yeah, no, it's not to uh, to uh, cover it. He was very, you know, it could have been more. Mr. Paulson said he just sort of pulled it out of the air, yeah. sort of yeah. as a way to put some confidence back in the system. Yeah. You have but to I'm, you have to secure the, the 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 thing that runs the economic system, are, is both the insurance, but mm -hmm. it's insurance and the banking system. The credit mm -hmm. comes out of that. Mm -hmm. If you let those two fall, you know, there, there we go. Talk about depression really deep. So they had to pour that in there to, to back those guys up. Right. But they've been ripping us off from day one. This is Gingrich and, and downsizing. This is changing the laws. And this guy, the vice president hmm. from Delaware, he's, he was one of the people I had he's on my not website. He's vice president yet, but he probably will be. Yeah, he's yeah. running for vice president. Yeah. <laughs> right. He's a senator from hmm. Delaware who's hmm. been down there. And they said last, uh, last night that he's one of the guys who signed the bill for the t to allow the banks to charge these outlandish credit rate uh, against the middle class and poor who they've been sending credit cards to every day mm -hmm. to stimulate the economy yeah. and then on top of that and if you if you if you're one Usurous, yeah. yes it's uh, mm -hmm. you know and then on mm -hmm. top of that he's the guy they said last night who signed the bill for uh, the bank to change the bankruptcy laws you can't even protect your home Oh, he loves the bankruptcy laws set the way they are for the corporations and the banks. Here they are, bailing them out. It's a uh -huh. perfect example. Uh -huh. They don't get hurt. <coughs> they, you know, uh, you walk into a bank and you tell, the, you tell the policeman standing at the door, what happens if I steal a dollar or grab some money off the counter and make a run for the You're door? You're in prison. 
Yeah, and you, why? And you're labeled as a person who you stole. Yeah. I stole from the bank. Bank say, robbers are held in high esteem in prison. Yeah, that's right. As it happens, they're at the top of the rank. You right. Know. So Willie you, Sutton used to say it, yeah, didn't so you yeah. tell the So you tell the police, man, what happens if I do it? You can see he goes for his gun, you know, yeah. he's about to do it. Yeah. So look, I'm not going to do it. You know, be calm, you know. There's two, I'm just asking. Two and a half million in there, there's room for another. Right. In our prisons. Right, yeah. but what happens to you if you do that? You're you're labeled as a, as a crook. Mm -hmm. You stole from the bank. Mm -hmm. And if you keep running, he's allowed to shoot you. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And they do. Yeah, and they do. Yeah, yeah. So by then you say to the bank, but well, uh, okay, I'm not going to do that, but I, I, I was just curious about that. I've got an accounting that. technique here. No, no, I want to know what happens when I put my money, $100 million in a hedge fund in this bank, uh -huh. and they suddenly say uh, they lost it. Mm -hmm. It's a write-off, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. It's a write-off, and they, lo <laughs> you know, they lost it. Oh, okay. Well, if I, can I steal a little, and you call it a write-off or a yeah, loss? No, it yeah. doesn't work that way uh -huh. for me. It works that way for you. Same with a corp. In other words, what do we have? What, what needs to be changed in Washington? Mm, tell right. me. What do you say? How much does it cost to get down in Washington? How it's much about is, 24 bucks on a bus now. No. Yeah, how, how much <laughs> does it cost to get there where the people make the laws uh -huh. that affect you and all of us? How much does it cost? Yeah. How much does it cost to become a senator? or? or uh, oh, oh, to become a senator, to yeah. be a, a, a decision maker. Yeah, or to be a president. I'm not sure. It's $50 million, is it, they charge? Or they're gonna pay, they're, it's a lot. You have to buy your way in because it's, it's very influential in terms of the we got a mayor city. right here in the city, one of the richest guys in the city. He's yeah. got, he wants to run for a third term. Yeah, he's going to he change said, the law. Know, well, not only that, he's going to buy it. Make damn sure he bought, he bought it yeah. in last time. Mm -hmm. you know, And he's got enough money to buy the thing again. The point is... The middle class, this isn't a government of the people, by the people, for the people. This is no. a government of the rich, by the rich, and for the rich. Right. And lobbied by the rich. Right. And when a, when a little guy from uh, Arkansas happens to get into the presidency, he ain't the big rich guy. But you can be darn sure that the rich put him in there. Uh -huh. And you can see it by looking when Clinton was in office, for an example. That's not the rich guy. But how do you get down there? You need a lot of money to be a president. You know, how, yeah. much, how much did they say last night it's going to cost to be? Did you hear that figure? I didn't hear the figure. You mean the, the election campaign? It's a run campaign? for the presidency of the United States. It's a billion dollars or something? It's going to yeah. be a billion dollar election or something this time? Yeah. yeah. So what, the middle class guy or little, uh, you know, person who wants to make change down the way? You're not going to get any change in Washington. Well, I think you it's are. It's impossible. But I, it's impossible. Okay. okay. Impossible. Yeah, but... Um, what, what, did, what did the vice president of the United States of America, who also was a governor of the state of New York City, uh, of New York State, mm. say in his own book, he said, when I thought when I went down to Washington, with my, I was one of the richest people in the country. Mm -hmm. I know everybody who pulls all the strings. I ran the biggest state in the country at the time, mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. And I went down to Washington as a vice president, and I found out you aren't going to change it at all. That was his answer in the book. You, there's no way you're changing that system. Well, and the system's set up because it's a capitalist system by the wealthy people. Mm -hmm. So it's run by the wealthy people. It's lobbied by the. So if a guy like Billy Clinton gets down in Washington, how do he get there? Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, the the lobbyists are going to remind him how they got there. Mm -hmm. And the proof of it is, you go over to Fortune magazine. Thank God for Forbes and his Fortune magazine. Mm -hmm. And you look at the top of who's at the top of the Fortune magazine when Billy Clinton was in office. It wasn't the oil companies. Mm -hmm. Those are only in because George Bush is in right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you look and see who was at the top of the Fortune 500 when, when Billy was in, and guess who was up there? I'm not sure who was there. A chicken farm. A chicken farm? <laughs> a chicken farm. A chicken farm. Yeah, yeah. a chicken, a chicken mm -hmm. producer. Tyson? Yes, exactly yeah, Tyson. right. Yeah, right. And you know who was number two? Uh, Another Arkansas company. Uh -huh. yeah. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah that just that magic. Yeah, mm -hmm. why don't you teach that at Harvard and Wharton? They mm -hmm. don't teach that down there. Yeah, well, that's interesting. But yeah. it's, hasn't it always been like that, Larry? Yeah. I mean, I mean, so you're talking about history, yeah. and it's always been like that. It was like that with the Aristos at the Versailles Palace. They owned everything. They had all the power and everybody else wallowing around in the mud. Yeah. And it was like that in Aristotle, Greece, or Pericles, yeah. Greece. There were slaves. Right. That's what they had, slaves to operate so some people could live that way. It's always been like that. Good. Uh, it's been like that, and it's here now, and it is in the whole world now. Sure. So you have a oh, few people... Been who run everything, have all the assets, own everything. The system is set up to protect their interests and so forth. They take care of themselves. And so there's nothing new right. in that model. Right. You know, and um, you so got it. that's where that is. That's yeah. why a lot of people have been in opposition generally to the system yeah. 
because they can see the injustice that's there. Yeah. They can see it working against the masses of the people, and they've been praying for a time when there will have to be a change to a system that is manifestly unjust. Even people like Stiglitz and others will say that the system in place, macroeconomic or understanding the economic theory level, that it will not be able to serve the interests of other than about the top 20 percent, and those that are at the 60, 80 percent level are not going to be or are able to be served by the system of economic theory that is in place that informs the political process in, in, in effect. So a lot of left-wingers, Marxists, would say, we'll finally get down to understanding Mr. Marx told us this and others have. He's part of the economic canon, and the economic canon informs the whole political process. And so it's been like that. So what's new? Isn't that what Warren Buffett said on television the other? I didn't one? see him saying that exactly. Yeah, he, he said, "I'm saying, so rich, he, I, I heard need to be say, taxed." I heard him say he hopes 700 billion is enough yeah. and everything. And no, no, I'm talking qu- about I'm talking about the, the control. Mm. He's saying, you know, I don't uh, I don't know why they're taxing me. I don't really, you know, I mean, I, I've got they tax his secretary I don't, more than him. Right, he uh, said, yeah, all right. the work the yeah, workers the workers taxing the waste basket. Right, waste basket operators are taxed at a higher rate than he is. Yeah, and he says so. They ought to be taxing me, you know, and the, and the rest of us. But that's all well and good. And you, and you got 50 people, maybe 100 people to one saying, why should we bail out these crooks that have been ripping us off and yeah. getting all the things for themselves and all that kind of And that's very much loose in the air. So everybody's holding their nose, they're doing it, but they're keeping it in place. And what's going yeah. to emerge out yeah. of this? And what's the significance of it? I happen to be really pleased they did it yeah. and everything. And I'm also thinking about it. What is it, if you, instead of talking about is this bad guy or this crook or that person or Mr. Gingrich did this or Mr. You know, he, you know, he voted against bankruptcy, this thing. What is, it, what is it at a theoretical level? that is wrong, if something is wrong at a qualitative uh, systems level, yeah. uh, out of the historical model, what has changed that might make something else different? And because it's really, it's so arcane, but it's really economic theory mm. that is informing that political process, ultimately. And what's going to emerge out of this situation that's coming here? I happen to be in uh, support for a long time, as you know, uh, of this binary notion of Lewis Kelso. Yeah. Lewis Kelso uh, was somebody who had a different kind of partake on the thing at a theoretical level. Yeah. If I could, I'm going to just spell it out yeah. for a minute. Because be from, 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 and my, my assumption is that if there's one thought that has to be coming into question and being addressed in a challenging way, a, a, a theorem or an idea, the theorem that has to be addressed, which underpins everything, is something called the labor theory of value. Mm-hmm. The idea that all wealth is created by labor and that we have in every economic system around the world, you have uh, income distribution to the people through a labor relationship to production, whereas the capital assets that are increasingly technological are held by a tiny group who is getting all that compound interest, and they're getting all that money, and it's all going to them, okay. and the people who are representing the workers are representing them politically that they're being badly treated or something, but that, and the work ethic and the idea that distribute income to everybody through their labor participation in the economy that is increasingly nationally and on a world order, increasingly not labor-intensive, it's capital-intensive, it's technological-intensive, and those assets are all owned by a small group, and it's assumed that it's entirely appropriate that you distribute income to the people through their labor participation in production or through that. I would say that's the major premise, and that that acceptance of that idea by the people that it's okay for a small group of people. We're like serfs on a feudal estate. You have a few people who own everything, the aristos in the Versailles Palace, then you got everybody else wallowing around, getting something. If they keep their nose clean and do what they're supposed to do and all that sort of thing, we'll be able to have a little something so that they can have bread to eat. Or the crumbs. It's like, it's, or the crumbs, and right. the, the, it's accepted at a theoretical level yeah. as the only way in which the system can be operated. And it's the thing where they pull the wool over the eyes of the, 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 the masses of the people, yeah. and the people at the top don't talk about it very much because visionless, they, they, they ascribe to it. And it doesn't matter at all. In this case, if this is the case, 
It doesn't matter at all. You can go all the way from Adam Smith. Let's just go through the canon, yeah. the thinking. Canon Smith, Ricardo with comparative advantage, Karl Marx. Right. doesn't matter if you're Karl Marx or the socialist. Yeah. Um, Keynes, Joseph Schumpeter, Van Mises, Van Hayek, uh, Friedman now. Yeah. Uh, Naomi Klein does a great job of attacking uh, Friedman, yeah. uh, the Chicago School, and the neocons. Yeah. But it's a, but it doesn't matter if you're in any of those. They all accept that idea of the labor theory of value. Absolutely, and that's what should be attacked at an intellectual level. And there's yeah. only one system that I know. Of. Maybe there's others, and there's yeah. people hinting at it and so forth. The only one system as a model and a system that that stands outside that canon yeah. is this one of Lewis Kelso that I can see. He wrote a yeah. book with Mortimer, yeah, that's, that's a Mortimer Adler in 1958, 50 right. long years ago, called the Capitalist Manifesto. Right. But if you're in the canon, it doesn't matter if you're a Marxist or a Friedmanite. Right. As long as you're accepting that idea that it's perfectly all right for the assets to be all owned by a tiny group, everybody else is a wage slave within that system, okay. then you're not going to be able to get to an answer. I think there's great hope that the system is being shaken now and that a general theory is going to be able to introduce. It won't be called that, but that's what's going to emerge, and it's going to be uh, setting up a system to deal with risk in the economic order, and things are changing fundamentally, yeah. and I think there's great hope, and I'm really glad that bill passed. Yeah. And you have a chart. Uh, is, is that what you were talking about? Well, I have this chart. Yeah, if because um, you have the banks and stuff. Yeah, and, and what is going to come the out? Reinsurance. Yeah. What? Let's see if you can. We got a chart here. This is um, this is what's going to come out of that. They're not going to call it that. We're just on the day that the House mm -hmm. passed it, and so forth. But at a general theory, what about that idea that? That the capital, well, we, we, yeah, come in on this chart. If you can, Willie, come in on my camera. Come in on this chart, you know, from my okay. camera. And then we can go to another one. But I think if they get to that, that's, the, that's what's going to emerge out of this. And is. that may have a chance of becoming, and what this is, it looks a little confusing. But what's going on now and what's coming out of it, they... Is this little box shown, the one on the far bottom there? It says Capital Diffusion Reinsurance <coughs> Corporation. That's exactly what's going on now, is they're dealing with the element of risk with a reinsurance uh, capability of the federal government, free, uh, the, the uh, full faith and credit of the federal government, a reassuring institution next to the Federal Reserve, mm -hmm. and within the system by which credit and banking is done, those other six or five boxes, yeah. and that they will stand behind a ca uh, an insurance industry, that would be the top one next right. to that. Yeah. Show them that, Larry, it was your finger, because I can't go to it. Yeah. That will be, well, no, to the right, over the right there. Commercial and capital credit that's insurance right. underwriting. And the reassuring agency will be against an insurance industry that will be able to insure against business loss, mm -hmm. and that can be that can be competitive part of feasibility study. It can be put into business practice, and it can be built into the process so that uh, ownership of assets are not a crapshoot where somebody are going to have a venture capture, but if you're going to have distribution of income to the people other than through their labor, they're going to have an ownership of the capital assets that are producing the wealth. You can't have it be a crapshoot that would pull the whole system down. You've got to have an insurance so that that stream is available to the people in a consistent way if you're going to have growth and steady growth into the future and it moves away from the idea it it moves toward a way in which the citizens will safely and appropriately and even in a growth sense be able to become owners of capital assets that are responsible for production and you'll get growth you'll have simul financing where you'll have both the, the capital accumulation and the income distribution uh, uh, in tandem and that's the thing that is needed, and it's only this binary system that I can see that stands outside that canon that all of the people are still singing the praises of, and it's very hard to get around because it's singing the praises of the work ethic, work hard, work yeah. hard, and that the people are responsible for that. And I think that that's what's going to emerge. It'll be that reassuring agency 
that will make it possible for the whole system in a systems way or as in a general theory way like Mr. Keynes used to put forth that is going to come and that that's the thing that Lewis Kelso always was saying is needed in order to get systems efficiency beyond just a, a corporate enclave like a uh, like an ESOP for mm -hmm. some one company within it but it was like a, a, a you know, f yeah. five st five. He created the ESOP. Stool. Didn't he? Yes, yeah. but that was one thing they were yeah. doing within okay. the system. But you have to have that, and that's what, whatever comes out of down in Washington, it could not be better named than the Capital Diffusion Reinsurance Corporation. It'll be part of the federal government, and it's going to be maybe named something else. But the end result of all the seven hundred billion and all the rest of it is going to provide that function to the system. Mm -hmm. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac have now become nationalized. They have done that. AIG, mm -hmm. that have. So it's such shaking the system up that they're going to be able to get out of the swoon with the labor theory of value that informs all economics and provide a way for us to have a system that's going to liberate the human spirit. Myself, if yeah. you can follow all that, what do you think? The only yeah. possible national entity like I'm, that might be... I'm uh, change the chart here for just a minute. Stay with us, though, because okay. you have a great chart here. Here. No, leave that one. Leave that one. Okay. That one better. Well, I like this other one, but okay. Okay, go we'll go to that. We can go here. Come to this chart, then. Read it, what it says, Larry. This is, again, Louis Kelso, the author of the book, The Capitalist Manifesto. Yeah, and he's showing time here. With Seven, Mortimer Adler, we might say, our preeminent philosopher. Way back in... 58, 50 yeah, years ago. 1776, and it's coming along this uh, axis here, out to 2000 on this chart. Yeah. And then it's going up in percentages, 100%, 80%, 60 up to zero. And, he, and it's saying accelerated advance of technological change. In other words, technological change is rapidly accelerating into our society. Quite obvious. They're dumping our workers out constantly. Well, they could or they so could So there goes so the labor. Could, yeah. Well, yeah, and if you look, that, so that's... There goes the theory of labor. That's the, well, the labor theory of value informs all economic policy. Right. You're going to distribute income by labor right. to the folks. And there's no jobs. There's no, they, can't, to, they can't keep well, the economy going. No, you can so you have to keep jobs. sending them credit cards to get well, to, so they'll go out and spend it. That's or, or true to George get the Bush, demand. You have, to, you have to write them a $300 check so everybody will go out and spend $300 keep the mm. capital system going. Yeah. It's not working because well, you, there's nobody working. Yeah, but you They're have, kicking people out of jobs. Well, they will, and... If I and may. here's why, Leave by the way. Leave that up. Leave no, I like your chart next up. chart. It's even more powerful. Yeah, but wait. I don't want right. to go away from this All right, fine, Don't I'll go leave. away from it yet. Okay, we can go, go to the other one. The other one's I mean, really good. This is something to contemplate. And what is, this is the year 1776, the year of nation, uh, wealth of nations. Yeah. This is for the American economy. It's a chart that's put up. Mm -hmm. And it, what it's saying is you fire over to the left of the chart, maybe 10% of production, goods and services, let's say, 10% was anything other than labor. Yeah. There was no manufacturing. There was no factories even. There wasn't anything. You had a hatchet to cut down a tree. It took you 12 years, 12 hours to make a pair of boots. It was labor, prodigious application of labor, and labor in the physical sense and in the intellectual sense was actually responsible for production. And this chart, if you go up further, if you go into the... It now up into the present, this is for the American, but it represents the world trend, yeah. is now probably only about 10% of actual production in the real economy yeah. is the result of human activity, intellectual yeah. Yeah. or physical. In the United now States. In the United no, States. No, that's in the United States, but it's the yeah. world trend. Not in China. It's the world trend. It's no, no. the world trend. No, no. It's still Ameri the world American, trend. that top rich America mm -hmm. is saying to you, you know, like General Electric. You go into General Electric, uh, we used to make uh, General Electric engines and so forth. We used to make airplanes. We used to make, you know, we don't make anything anymore. You go in these companies, all they got is a laptop on their desk. Mm -hmm. And they got a, and they got a uh, Blackberry in their pocket. Mm -hmm. And they're traveling around and you say, where's the, where's the business? We don't produce anything. It's Where is it? The labor and the production is in China or well, India. Labor, yeah, but be, so, so the rich say, what, uh, you know, uh, bail me out because we're, all we're doing is we're transferring wealth. No. First, we take your job away by the tens of well, millions. That's outsourcing. Then we yeah. then we take your pensions away. Mm -hmm. This is and money just doesn't disappear. It's like it's like where did all this money go? Mm -hmm. You know, the FBI is put in this government to protect the system, but the FBI reports to the Treasury. Yeah. Guess why? Yeah. I used I spent fifty years in corporations. I'd walk into corporation. The executives say. Gal, why are we why are we using you? I said because I'm good at what I do. What's your problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we got a problem. We just lost five hundred million dollars. I yeah. said that's an easy problem. Yeah. 
He looked at me, it's an easy problem. What are you talking about? I said, well, that's why you got me, because everybody tell you it's an easy one to solve. He said, how are you going to solve it? Just like that. Yeah, how are you going to do it? It's very easy. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to start by looking approximately where you think you lost it. Mm -hmm. He said, what are you, some kind of a nut? Mm. I said, no, you don't understand the system. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's my money. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm the treasury. I have the FBI reporting to the treasury. Mm -hmm. I'm the treasury. You know why I'm the treasury? Because it's my money. Mm -hmm. I printed it. I put it out in circulation for yeah. you. Mm -hmm. You can play with it. We got laws that allow you to play with it. You don't lose my money. You understand? You don't eat my money. You don't burn my money. You don't spend my money where I don't want it spent. You just keep it in circulation. It's okay. okay. But you didn't lose any money. In a capitalist system, it just transfers to the efficient players. Mm -hmm. If I gave you, if, if you call, here's what happened. I, I, can, I can tell the story. Go on, go on, My wife it. gets a six, a six figure uh, salary from one of the biggest, uh, in, I don't want to say names, yeah. biggest insurance company in New York City, one mm -hmm. of the biggest, it's a global one, it's mm -hmm. actually European, mm -hmm. because they've just taken this guy that just came in, he was at Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs brought him in from Singapore, he's a genius in this thing called derivatives, Derivative. nobody ever heard about it, Swap he's the genius, yeah. so they brought him into this company because he's now going to do derivatives for this big right. uh, corporation, right. he's living out in New Jersey in a fabulous freaking home, right. he takes me out there, he's got 29 bedrooms or whatever, I don't know, yeah. not that many, but it looked that like that. Mm -hmm. He's living like God. He's got a Mercedes Benz. He comes, he goes. He's got all kinds of money. They're paying him towards it. Derivatives is the thing. They're going to build the company on well, derivatives. Well, that's been in for quite a while. So they said, cause this thing to fall. What did, what did the man say on television? Just, the, you know, on Charlie Rose. What did... Uh, Buffett? Yeah, what did he say about... Well, he was saying... That, what yeah, did, what well, did he say he published in his own, own uh, letter to his own stockholders? I don't what remember. What did he call derivatives? I don't oh, well, I'm not sure. Mass he, destructive economic destruction. Mass weapon of economic destruction. I think that's too simple. I think that derivatives... That's what he said. I know, but if I may, uh, and we can go into that, but I, I don't think... It, 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 it does apply to the whole world and is seen as a model for the whole world. And you're not talking just about physical input or something like that, of, you know, wheelbarrow guys or something. You're talking about all human input to production. And no, the no, no, derivatives, no. I mean, no, you're no, talking no. about you're, the labor theory of value. Yeah, because The intellectual input yeah, is no, also you don't, relevant. No, you don't understand. The, under, the thing is they're transferring wealth. And how does it work? Well, it used to be I'd call you up and say, give me $100 million. I'm going to invest it for you. You say, yeah, I'm not going to give you $100 million. Who the hell are you? Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, we're so-and-so. We're Merrill Lynch, Pierce, Fenner, Smith, and we're, we've got a track record. We're going to invest it here. Mm -hmm. And I could, I could check it out, the investments and so forth. But if I come into you now and say, hey, guess what? I'm going to, I'm going to get, I don't want $100 million. I want $500 because I'm going to put it in a hedge fund. What are we going to do in a hedge fund? Well, I don't know who you are. Well, well we're going to hedge fund. We're, we're going to put our money over in India. You say, okay, well, why should I give it to you? Because look at these. This is a derivative. You know, it's a derivative here. It's a derivative here. Listen, I go down and I give a speech in Wharton. Yeah. Wharton, Philadelphia. the college. Or, yeah. And it's in the graduate school of business. So when yeah. I'm done, I walk around all the graduate students and I ask Lawrence the graduate Klein. students. Yeah. Two years ago, I asked all the graduate students, what's the hottest topic here at Wharton, the, bit, the top school here in one of the top business schools in the country? Mm -hmm. Oh, Oh, the hottest thing is derivatives. Right. No kidding, I say Swaps derivatives. I, my wife, I happen to know the, guy, the, the number one derivative guy who come into this country. Okay. So, so, so I'm saying, okay, what's, what's the derivatives? Oh, it's a professor. There's a woman down here, but nobody can get in her class. In fact, some people actually graduate, come back and wait to get in her class. I said, why? Because when you walk out of class at Wharton and derivatives, you right down on Wall Street, all these companies are in trouble there. Why were they using derivatives? Cause they well, could, because you can't figure out. It's a mathematical, even, even Buffett said it. He said, I've been in business all my life. He said, you can't figure those things out. There's no answer to them. Well, I, now, well, I went on the website and checked out who this guy was who came from Singapore. Mm -hmm. says if he goes back to Singapore, they arrest him. Mm -hmm. This is derivatives. Mm. They're transferring wealth. First well, they take your job, then they mm. take your home. Then they, take, they change the laws to take the home in bankruptcy. Then they take your pension. Then they take your health care. Mm. And, and what's the best transfer? The best transfer is an economic crash, a total economic crash. Okay. Because money, my point of the, the yeah. point is money doesn't disappear. Mm -hmm. The Treasury prints it. They know where the money is, and they intend to get it back. It's okay. as simple as that. Well, I so know they're securing their money okay. in the banks and the things. And that, but, but, oh. the, but the people have been transferring the wealth. They want to buy China and India. Oh, right. They haven't got enough money to do it. Okay. So it's killing the middle class, and, the, and, and, the, uh, and they're not worrying about the, the, your chart here about labor. Or this no, one, no, they're not. I am. Or this one back here. Yes, you are, because you're looking for a solution for us. They don't want a solution. Their solution to this problem lies in China and India. Mm. And they've got billions of people over there. We only got 300 million here. 
So they can't wait to transfer the wealth to do that development. Yeah, but this is a different. This is Buckminster Fuller's chart about we're transcending yeah. scarcity at an ontologic that level. That's going out even to a farther reach. And I know a lot and of it's people. True. I know a lot of what the what the derivatives and swaps and derivatives is about is risk. Could they it's zoom all in on about that? risk because you have various layers or you have various elements of risk in the economic process or in the economic order. There's risk. That's what it's about. And I know a lot of people in banking, if they did not put a derivatives clause in against, say, uh, currency fluctuations that are going to change the contract, it's like an insuring thing against the changes, currency change. That's the way Mr. Soros made all the money in the currency uh, fluctuations between the value of the various currencies. And in order to have insurance against loss, that's what the derivatives and swaps was brought about, and it got out of hand a little bit, but it's there. But what it's about in a larger order isn't about this one thing that's going to go on with China and everything, and it's not just the input of people in the United States. It's not just the American economy. It's the whole world order, and it's just coming in. And what it is is I'm saying if you get back to that other chart, this one. That's what this I'll is about, up. this one. This, this one? is the one, a general oh, theory. One. The yeah, well, that's a solution. Is, the problem, they don't want a solution. The problem is in a larger order. Mm. Why is it so screwed up? The, and what's going to emerge? Mm. What's going to emerge is going to be uh, international and national st stock, an alternate way to direct, an alternate way to accumulate capital so mm. that you can make technological investments in the, in, the, in the process, and one way that builds not only the accumulation of capital formation for, techno, for investment, but one that also distributes income to the masses of the people of the world rather than just the few. Uh, uh, in a way that is firm and settled and uh, steady, and you have to have a reassuring capability against a ca uh, an insurance industry against loss. So that you can go, a lot of things in the economic order are not a big uh, venture capital crapshoot. There's mm -hmm. going to be hedge funds, there's going to be people trying to do that. You should put that up higher and higher. You should put the risk up higher and higher you can go. T-bills are totally safe, okay? They're now paying a net, a negative now because everybody's wanting to be safe. It's so ordered. What this shakeup is going to do is make it possible to build a system where the, the level of risk where you can go up uh, like uh, is going to get higher and higher because there'll be a reassuring thing, and it's going to have to be because you're going to be distributing ownership of capital assets, not labor, capital ownership. Yeah, That's the question. There won't be any you're labor here. You're going to here. distribute income by capital ownership to the masses, yeah, and you're it. going to end up rather than having people having distributing income to people through labor and people will say well let's get a working wage let's mm. get more money to the people that are contributing all this work mm. all the labor the marx is called a surplus labor theory of value that's mm. the problem mm. the labor theory of value because this chart or this one this mm. one doesn't apply just to the american economy it applies to the world trend of the economy definitely lord kane said you are going to be confronted with massive technologically induced unemployment you have a productive capability that is overwhelmingly able to provide everything for people within the human society and it is not going to need labor they're going to be displaced and the only way the folks have to get income to buy things in order to clear the market is by having a labor relationship to production within a wage slave system right. everything's set template by the people right. and so that's good this is now shaking the foundations of that it has led to the overall systems problem right because they, they haven't dump, had a there's general no labor system there's no jobs because the trend is for technological displacement of labor and that's right. the purpose of the industrial revolution is to put people out of work right put people out of the labor force right unemployment you got to have an alternative way to distribute income now, some of these things are going to be done, and this yeah. is this correct? Yeah. Is this a correct assumption? People can see it on the screen if they have a big uh, uh, television screen. Is this correct for the world order that the input of labor to production is now down in the American economy in real terms to something like 10%? Hmm. Nobody and uh, the ownership of the technology is getting compounded interest for few that own it, and they have a system that is yeah. not safe for the people to be able to get income. They're going to have to distribute ownership to the people as an instrument of income distribution. 
Now, in his general theory... In order to stop a revolution. No, and not going, to stop a well, revolution, are, to a lot... Look, well, we're at a point, gonna, Larry, They're either going to do Larry, this or control the people. get bigger in your thinking. Get bigger. We're <laughs> at right. a point now where the weapon systems are species lethal. Yeah. The modeling is there. We did it there. Yeah. There's weapon systems. We've been hitting each other in the head, stealing the grain, taking all that with systems within right. this, and it's all built in the canon on the idea of the labor theory of value. Right. It's you're going to distribute income that way. That's the way wealth is created through work and right. association with natural resources. It is now technological system, but they've been doing that, and they're now getting to the point where that is no longer going to be able to serve, and the weapon systems that are part of that technological capability that have come out of that are now species lethal. Yeah. Okay, we've come Wipe to the everybody end. Out. Now, there's something else on the other side yeah. of that kind of an equation. Now, this is something worth keeping in mind. This is a reality for the world trending. Yeah, there's no doubt it's about American, it. It's American, but we are this mentor economy for the world. Yeah. And this is the trending. This one is a larger scene thing. This is Bucky Fuller. You can go back to Bucky Fuller. Yeah, I like that one. And this is the thing where he said we're transcending in terms of our capability. Right. We may actually be trending, uh, trans, uh, tr transcending material scarcity right. on a world scale, world system scale, for the first time in this very time in which we live. Both lines were probably crossed around 1970. Mm -hmm. That is when the weapon systems became species lethal. Mm -hmm. And when we were trans, we were getting to a point where there were, in actual terms, in terms of our capability, it can be modeled. It could be uh, there were more haves than have-nots. You need a definition of terms, but it's an idea that yeah. was shaking the world around 1970. Yeah. So we're either going to annihilate our line, our hominoid line, or we're going to liberate them. Mm, right. The way of liberating is getting a source of income so that they will have income to buy what it is they want from a system I, that right is not you. wage slavery. It is because they're brought in on the logic of business finance. You make an investment, but you've got to have capital accumulation. You've got to have a sure system for it to go to the folks so that they then will be able to clear the market. Demand. You'll have supply and demand in tandem. We don't have it under Keynes. We don't have it under Mark. We don't have it under any of those things. Maybe Lewis. Well, Lewis what'll, Kelso. What'll, so what'll motivate? And that's what's going to emerge out of this seven hundred billion bailout is going to it'll be called something else but it's going to be essentially setting up a system of reinsurance against loss so that it's safe to expand ownership of capital instruments responsible for production and for the masses of the people and it'll let the venture people be ever higher in the adventure that they can go but you got to have that safe and, and, and insured and that's what's going to be happening out of this thing that's going on on this day we're going to create that. It'll call it something else, but that's what's going to emerge. And that's very hopeful because you can get out of the swoon of uh, labor distribution of income. The Employment Act of 1946 is our fundamental policy statement. It's going to have to be vision, uh, revisited. We have to have an alternative way of distributing income to the people that is not linked to the traditional system of income distribution through labor. And that's the thing that's shaking up this capitalist system. Mm -hmm. And this is a model that makes sense, and I think that's what's going to emerge, and that's why I'm very happy they did it. I don't think they know what they're doing. I agree with one. They're being forced to it. They're I, being forced uh, to it, and it's uh, shaking up everything, and it's very positive because it's going to get us out of the, the nightmare that we've been in of injustice and inappropriate application, and it would free people to be interested in doing what they want to do rather than be within a wage slave system where the boss man says the template and everybody else is like a serf on the feudal estate. Liberation may be in order, and the Congress may be reacting in a, in a, in a large sense to what's going on. But go ahead, I, talk. I, I love what you said, 99% of it, and is absolutely correct about they're going to form this well, that's what will this. emerge. It's yes. called that. Lewis I agree wanted with, it to be called I, that. I agree with that, one hundred percent. But that's the purpose. That's the function. Here, here's the serve. only. Here's the only v difference, and I like to get it on the show recorded. We've only got about five they, minutes left. That's or okay. less. It'll take one second. Okay. <laughs> one less. second. Here we're Maybe. counting. We're one. counting. It's Nanosecond. Right. Nanosecond. How Turns about, up and going. How about twenty seconds? Mm. Let's try that one. They will definitely create that for the exact reasons you explained. It's, so it's a warning but now as we talk as they the pass that bill. You've That's what I'm me, saying. You've got to give me more seconds. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, they will definitely do that mm -hmm. in exactly the way you explained it for, to cover the risk and so forth. But it'll be to cover the risk for the rich. It won't be to cover it for the middle class or redistribution. 
They're not going to do it. Well, that's the part we got to get There's no in. motivation for them to do it. No, there Why is. should they do it? Well, Why should they do it? They're in control. Well, Lewis was more... Uh, Why should I, they do it? They're not going to do it. Well, th- th- because they are not able to call the shots the way they could. They've now taken over Freddie May. Right. A- a- 80% of AGI. That's a- I- a- th- That went to the government. Right. It's now a matter of policy. And Barack well, Obama, that- who's going to win the election, he's still only going to distribute income according to labor. Right. Let's get people educated, and they'll get more money by... They're not going to get any change in Washington. You're going to get change. Uh, it's going to emerge. They're going to get, this is change. They don't even know what they're doing. But oh, it's yes, going to emerge. No, they don't. It's just a it's lot of their people money. are very they, confused. They don't like the fact that their money got Okay, it. I'm telling you... People were ripping off their money. Well, I'm very... They know pleased. who ripped it off. And no. They, and they know... No, no. These comp- the, there aren't companies that are doing things because a company can't do anything. Mm-hmm. There's individuals inside the company. And they're the ones that got us into that condition. They know mm-hmm. who those people are. They know where their money is. They want to secure that. They want to secure those institutions because those institutions are the engines of global development. Mm. Yes. And of shifting labor to China and India. But not only that, that's a smaller that's, issue. That's outsourcing. That's oh, smaller that's big. Issue that's the, big. I know it is. But I'm it's telling billions. you, they don't know they're doing it. They don't even like they're you doing don't it. Know but it. They're the, being forced you don't know it. The media doesn't know it. And, and the people out here don't know it. But the people at the top know it. Well, the people at the top All do, behavior but being is forced. caused, I repeat. Uh, those things don't just happen. Uh-huh. You don't read in the newspaper, oh my God, did you see the Russians invaded Afghanistan? It's on the, the media is just telling us the Russians. Uh-huh. You know, it's caused. It takes months to invade a country. Uh-huh. You have to move tanks. People uh-huh. know who's. So, so there's 1% of the people are doing it. Uh-huh. Maybe they're 10, not. They're, but 5 they're, to 15% no. are watching them and know they're doing it. Yeah, but and it, the rest of us haven't got the foggiest idea it's no, but we're until it's to, done. No, but it's going to emerge. It's going There's to no emerge. There's no motivation Just like for that it. thing is not going to be no called motiv- a reinsuring thing or going to give that support to that thing or any of those things are going to be there. It's going to emerge because it's coming out of the existential necessity and they're having to face it. So that's what's happening. They'll catch up to it. They will come. And it's, they're not doing it because they want to. They're being forced to. Because yes, of the system. definitely. They have okay. to. They have to so secure. So there's hope. What I'm saying. But all they're doing hope. is securing the banks and the, and the insurance industry. There, yes, and the system. And they, there's hope. It's a reinsure. You won't have to have swaps and derivatives. You're going to have an insuring against risk built into the system in the name of the people. And these there will people be that in Washington. These people in Washington can't even change the medical system to take care of children. Yeah. 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 They can't take care of the medical. They don't have any dental. There's no dental That's insurance why for people. 50 percent. Walk around the cities all over the country. You see people with their teeth out. Mm. You know why? Because there's no dental insurance. It's sky high. Okay. What about medical? There's no medical. They can't even do that. They won't even do it for children. Yeah, but you're they're not going to do this for well, for children for oh, the well, middle class. Not, then, then, they're they're going to do it for themselves to well, secure the wealth for well, themselves. Well, they're going to do that. They're going to do that yeah. perhaps. But okay, th- you're but just that's, kidding yourself. Otherwise, perhaps so. They will. Uh, no, I agree. With, so. well, I, I agree right. with you 100. percent They're going to have to do this mm. eventually mm. They're doing to it. prevent the, the real graphic. revolution. Mm. I agree totally. Oh, no, not a revolution. I understand it. But it's more than a revolution, Larry. They, it's no, that's liberation. The... Yes. It's liberation for everybody right. rather than annihilation. It's not that's what the French had in their banner they for the revolution. They can't just send out their atomic Lib. bombs and everything now. They can't do it. They've right. come to the end and it's a liberation. So all the Marxists would say, all we need is Marx. What you need is this. Yeah. And it's happening right, right. now, today. Right. To preserve, you, you got it, to preserve the capitalist no, system, and to, to preserve the wealth no, for the wealthy the con- people. And to set the context for a liberation, to make it safe for everybody to be related alternately to the way things are produced, leaving us free to be leisured and with uh, concern with the goods of civilization and create an order that will liberate humanity and uh, in a material sense, an intellectual sense. That's what we're on the verge of. we got this chance to do it. That's why it's so encouraging that you, they're doing that. You, and they're you, doing you, it not. Not even knowing they're doing it. You remind me of the ambassador.